Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby and today we are having more fun with oven dry clay because I love this stuff, I really do. And I also love sharks, as you guys probably know. So I'm combining the two and I'm making oven dry clay shark jewelry, namely uh, like a faux shark tooth. Um, hopefully it'll look just like it. I also have findings kit, so it's gonna help me out. You can make earrings, necklaces, bracelets, all sorts of things out of these. The bigger ones are definitely cooler and they come with like jewelry pliers. I tend to just pick up these when I see them at the store, mainly because I always lose them. I probably wouldn't if I got the bigger kind, but like these are so tiny, it's like my fourth one. But they're like between 97 cents and $2. So I just pick them up and then when I lose them, I'm not heartbroken. Um, I thought I lost my clay today, actually. I, uh, I've i been using this all the time lately and I couldn't figure out where I put it. So I do lose things, which is why I buy the cheap little ones because they'll be gone soon. <laughs> Hopefully not, but you know how it goes. So these are the colors that I'm using today. I have a translucent white and then I have um, like a silver. So that is the goal today. And uh, we will be whipping that up into a necklace probably. I wanna make a little pendant of it. So I thought that would be cool. I'm not sure the size yet. I don't wanna do super tiny, like not super tiny, maybe like that, I think. Maybe like an inch. I'll make it look like a, Oh, why not go for like something that looks like a great white, white tooth? Um, all right, so great white teeth are about there, like an inch and a half. So let's go for a great white tooth with oven dry clay today as a necklace pendant. I will link everything you need down in the description below along with my socials. Also, I've been working with oven dry clay a lot lately, so I will link some of those videos down below as well. They're really cool. Um, I started out with uh, making faux rock that I'm going to craft with and um, you know, a couple jewelry pieces that came out of that. So I'll link those down below and above if you're interested in checking them out and let's get going. So start off with protecting your workplace. I have a toothpick and I'm pulling out a long stick from my findings kit with a loop on the end, prepping my clay. So I have the white and the gray. And then I'm just gonna get started kneading it because getting it all kneaded together is the hard part. So get the gray nice and soft, get the white nice and soft, and then we will begin our project once both of those are kneaded and soft and uh, pliable and easy to work with, really. I'm going to shape my white tooth kind of like a long arrow with uh, points on each side. That's gonna help me with the tooth shape. Think of it as two teeth together. And then I'm going to separate my gray into two parts, part to make the root area of the tooth, which is what I'm doing right now. You can see like a little chevron. And then part I'm gonna make a triangle and that's gonna go inside the white part of the tooth just to give it a little bit of color inside so it's not completely translucent. Fold it over on itself, add the root area, and now it's time to stick it onto the necklace. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but we are gonna fix that. Right now we just need the general shape. So we're gonna get it on to I don't know what these are, like a metal stick or dowel or something. Basically, it's got a loop on the end and that's what makes it a pendant. So I'm gonna push the clay all the way to the end of it and start shaping the shark tooth from there. So really what I wanna do is get a nice triangular shape. I want the root to go down in the center. Um, I want the root and the tooth enamel area to blend nicely. So I'm gonna be kind of smushing it down and using my toothpick a lot to shape it. Right now, I'm just kind of smashing down the edges of the teeth. The teeth need to be serrated for sure to make it look at all realistic. So I really want it to narrow kind of nicely at the ends and be smooth, but not like 100% smooth the way it would be if my finger did it. So I'm just going to smush down the edges of all four, which makes them taper at the edges and kind of makes it naturally, naturally more of a sharper edge um, so that I can get to serrating it later. But I want to make sure that I do get a little bit of the shape started so that I know what I'm working with. Next up, I'm gonna be working on the root area. I need to kind of drag it down in the center a little bit in the front and slightly in the back, more so in the front, but it's kind of a unique shape. The top center part comes down and then it kind of goes up a little bit and then it comes down on the edges on both sides. But the, um, so on the back of the tooth, I don't know, it's hard to explain. You can kind of see it there. It comes down and then it's gonna go up and go up higher on the back than it does in the front. That's just kind of the way shark teeth are. I'm not uh, doing anything fancy there. It's more just like trying to mimic what I see in uh, real life. So basically I'm just kind of going to smash it and smush it until it is a shape that I'm happy with that I think looks like a realistic shark tooth shape. And uh, that includes the color differentiation between the root area and the tooth enamel part. 
I'm just going to shape that with my fingers. Then we're going to go back in and add some lines with the toothpick. All teeth kind of have these little like marking, you know, I don't know if they're stress points or just, you know, actual lines in the teeth, but a lot of shark teeth have this, especially fossilized ones. But, um, even the modern ones that aren't fossilized, they still have them. So putting those in and going back in and going to be serrating the edges, I don't really have a good way of doing this. We've already made the area thin, so I'm just working with that and basically just pushing the Q-tip through it and punching it through to my finger the other side in tiny little marks so that I can get a rough estimation of a serrated edge. Basically, I just want it to be a little bit rough, a little bit ragged, and uh, in that way, I think it's going to look a lot more natural, and that's what I'm going for. There isn't really any way to cheat this. You just kind of have to put each individual mark in there. And then since the clay does drag out a little bit, kind of smush it with your finger in a little bit so that it, you know, isn't completely crazy and just bleeding out looking like clay. So it looks a little bit like it was intentional. I'm going to go in on the other side, do the same thing. I finally caught the, uh, the method for how to do this, which is the finger behind and bring the toothpick through to it and then just make sure that we don't sacrifice the shape of the tooth for that. But it is looking pretty good, and I think it's getting ready to put in the oven. I'm going to bake this for half an hour at 230 degrees Fahrenheit, as the instructions say. But before I do that, I'm just stippling a little bit in the root area because it should be nice and textured. But uh, that's how it turned out. That's what's going into the oven, and hopefully this gives us a lovely shark tooth pendant. If I can get the shadows right so you can see it and uh, we'll see how it turns out. The shark tooth is fresh from the oven. Beautiful great white tooth. So this is really cool for a necklace pendant. Let me see if I can get to focus so you can see a little bit more clear. Definitely do close-ups at the end. I do love having a ring light, but sometimes like when it doesn't focus and you can't see, it's a little frustrating. So uh, anyway, we will do a close-up at the end to counteract that, but it looks really cool. The root area is a little bit uh, textured leads down uh, really well actually into the white and we made that translucent and we put the gray in there. So from behind when it's backlit, oh, how can I show that? Cause it's really cool. You can see the gray in there, but then like the edges just look like tooth enamel. The serration, which very important, like if it's not a fossilized tooth and it's a great white and that's not like damaged, you're gonna see serration. So you have to put that on there if you want to look at all real. It's about the right size, I think, maybe a little bit small, but, you know, super cool hanging down. I think we nailed the shape of it, honestly. I mean, I'm not a shark tooth expert, but researching sharks is definitely a hobby, and I think this looks pretty close to a great white tooth. So we are going to take a chain here, got right here, and just open the loop that's already on here with my multi-purpose tool. I'll link one of these in the description. You have to have them. <laughs> it's non-negotiable. They're like the coolest thing ever. If you're like making jewelry or just going about the house, like, you know, you can like open up battery compartments for toys and, you know, fix things. Like they're just, they're the best thing ever. Definitely could not imagine my life without like, what do I have, five of them? They're great. Okay, so here is our necklace. It's kind of a bigger pendant, but you know, if it's gonna be a great white shark tooth, it's gotta be pretty big, right? That's pretty cool. That actually works really well with the dress. It's kind of a like boho vibe. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. I really like that. I love shark tooth jewelry. I really do. I love anything about sharks. Like this is just, oh, that's really cool. I really, really like that. I'm gonna do a close up so you guys can see it, but uh, thanks so much for watching and bye for now. All right, you guys, I wanted to get you a close-up of the tooth. I put it on one of my red dresses, actually, for a red background because I thought that would be just, you know, appropriate. But uh, that is a close-up. I got my camera to focus. You can see the serrated edges. You can see that translucent quality that I was talking about with the gray and the white inside the tooth. You can see the lines. Those are very important to make it look realistic. The root area, I need to work on getting that to look more natural. The little stabs with the toothpick kind of got it. I mean, it's textured, but it's not 100%. The backside's pretty cool too. Look at those lines, totally sells it. Um, let me see if I can get it backlit. I'll hold it up to the window in a second and backlit that for you guys, but the root area is a little bit thinner on the back. All in all, honestly, I think we nailed this. I am super pleased with how this turned out. Let me get a 
against the window so you can see that backlit that I was talking about. All right, so it is a beautiful day. Um, the sun is kind of cooperating. You can see the inside of the tooth. You see that shadow? That is the gray that we put in there. And then the translucent white on the outside. That's what I'm talking about, about it being backlit and seeing the clay inside. It's a really subtle touch, but I think it's really cool. And we're back to the close-up zoom up on the front because I felt weird ending the video on a backlit you know, view of the outside. It just seemed a little weird. So uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you here soon. Bye for now.